Countersinks and plug cutters start out as steel bars. To make a countersink, this computer-guided tooling machine uses what's called a center drill to pierce the starting hole, then switches to its main drill, which bores right through. Next, it uses what's called a rough turning tool to shape the countersink's angled nose, then its body. The machine now switches to a milling cutter. This tool shapes the countersink's four blades. A cross drilling tool bores a hole for the two screws that will hold the countersink to the drill. A tap cuts threads into the hole. Next, a tool called a dovetail cutter sharpens the blades. Then finally, a cutoff blade removes the tool. The same machine makes plug cutters. Its center drill makes a starting hole, but this time the main drill doesn't bore right through. It stops at the depth that the plug cutter is designed to cut. Just as before, the rough turning tool shapes the body, and the milling cutter sculpts the four blades. Some plug cutters on the market have fewer blades. This company makes four, so the cutter will clear the wood chips more efficiently when it tunnels into the wood. After the dovetail cutter sharpens the blades, a tool called a boring bar refines the hole in the center, making it the proper size. Another turning tool now forms the shank, the stem of the plug cutter that you insert into the power tool. Then the cutoff blade slices the tool off. Now for some manual touch-ups. First, they grind the plug cutter against an abrasive wheel to remove excess metal from the cutoff. Then they do what's called side chipping, grinding the sides of each blade to a particular shape that'll clear the wood chips. Here's how the plug cutter looks before and after grinding off the excess, and before and after side chipping. And now for making the drills to which the countersinks attach. It all starts with a tapered piece of steel, because this will become a taper point drill. Straight drills begin with a straight piece. A mechanical arm inserts this drill blank, as it's called, into a computer-guided grinder. The machine has two wheels made of boron nitride granules, a natural material that's tough and abrasive. The first wheel shapes the smooth blank into lengthwise spirals called flutes. A second wheel then grinds sharp cutting edges on the flutes and shapes the tip of the drill to a point. Back to the countersinks now. The steel is still relatively malleable, so a worker runs each one through a stamping machine that imprints the size of the tool and the company name. Whereas the drills are made of a different type of steel that's already hard enough, the countersinks and plug cutters must undergo a heat treating process to harden, about 20 minutes in a fiery oven, along with a secret recipe of chemicals. The intense heat, 1750 degrees Fahrenheit, transforms those chemicals into gases which then permeate and harden the steel. After cooling in warm water and oil for about 15 minutes, workers submerge the tools in an industrial strength cleaning solution that removes all the oil grit. Then a bath in acid to remove soot from the oven. Then finally, 20 minutes in a blackening solution, the ingredients of which are again a closely guarded company secret. This last step is purely cosmetic.